spiritual warfare principle number seven. Don't fight for victory. Fight from victory. You see, the battle's already won. Our Lord has spoken the last words. It is finished. Our Christ rose from the grave. It was impossible for death to hold him in the grave. Satan had no claim upon our Lord Jesus Christ. See, though, victory has already been won. This is spiritual warfare principle number seven. Don't fight for victory, fight from victory. And I like to read in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. It's going to be the amplified version. When you were dead in your sins and in, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, worldliness, manner of life, God made you alive together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our sins, having canceled out the certificate of debt, consisting of legal demands, which were in force against us, and which were hostile to us. And this certificate he has set aside and completely removed by nailing it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. He made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. See, the victory has already been won. Here we see our Lord disarmed the rulers and the authorities, the supernatural forces of evil operating against us. He disarmed them. Not only that, he made a public display, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal, triumphant, triumphal procession. Amazing having triumphant over them through the cross. It's the power of the cross. The word of the cross, again, is the power of God. We, we need to hear the power that comes from the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it was the cross that dealt with Satan, that gave him the death blow. Don't fight for victory. Fight from victory. Don't beg, Lord, help, help. And, oh, Lord, I pray that you would have victory in this situation. No, the victory is won. How do you pray that prayer if the victory has already been won? When a victory has already been won, what do you do? You praise Him. You thank them. You think, praise God for you, what you have accomplished. It's like when you're watching a Super Bowl game. And the game is already finished. And your team has already won. The opposing team has lost. What are you going to do? Continually pray? Oh, God. I pray that my team would win. But the game's over. It's finished. If you knew that it is finished, you would be jumping for joy and just, we won the Super Bowl. Jesus had the last words. 
It is finished. Don't fight for victory. Fight from it. From victory. Because when you praise the Lord, the importance of praise, it acknowledges the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Really, that's, that's all we need to do is praise Him. Praise the Lord Jesus. He's given us everything to live the victorious Christian life, to overcome the enemy, to, to win battles, to evict Him. Because it is finished. We have a Savior. Our Lord is in the heavens. There is a man in the glory. And his name is Jesus Christ. That's the work of the cross of our Lord Jesus. Acts 2.32 The Amplified Bible he foresaw and spoke prophetically of the resurrection of the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, that he was not abandoned in death to Hades, the realm of the dead, nor did his body undergo decay. Think about that. When our Lord Jesus Christ, when He died, even His body did not go under decay. Wow. It wasn't corrupted. Well, what does that mean? Satan had no claim upon our Lord and Savior. Why is this important when it comes to spiritual warfare? Because you could speak this truth when you pray. Oh, by the way, when I pray against those forces of evil and I'm sharing to them specifically who Jesus is, I would say, oh, by the way, it was a man without sin that overcame you. And he never went or when he never under, underwent decay. Why? This is the word of God. This is the truth. Because you never had claim on him. There was nothing you had on our Lord. Absolutely nothing. That's why we need to know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Acts 2.24 Let's turn to Acts 2.24. This verse 22. It says, Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man, attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the pre predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. And God raised him up again putting an end to the agony of death, since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Death could not hold resurrection life. It was impossible. The very life, this resurrection life, Death could not hold. All the forces of evil, all together accumulated 
That day to hold our Lord in the grave. But it was impossible. Death could not hold resurrection life. It's amazing. And this resurrection life now indwells in us. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. The enemy's lost the battle. Jesus Christ has won. See, divine life, Christ himself, as a man, fully God and fully man, he, he, he suffered, he was nailed to the cross. Divinity was crucified, came down into the grave, and it came out on the other side of the cross as resurrection life. And that dwells in us. It was impossible for death to hold him in the grave. Let's turn to John 14, verse 30. King James Version. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The prince of this world, Satan, had nothing on our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our Lord. This is our King. And this is who we represent. We are ambassadors of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We have the very life of our Lord Jesus indwelling in us. By the name of Jesus alone, the demons tremble. They fear. Don't fight for victory. Fight from victory. Our Lord won the battle. It's to enter into this reality by faith. Satan had nothing no claim on our Savior. Let's turn to John 19, 28 to 30. I'm going to read out the Amplified Version. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said in fulfillment, of the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was placed there. So they put a sponge soaked in the sour wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. See, Jesus was on the cross at this time. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and voluntarily gave up his spirit. See, we have to be very clear. You know, Satan had nothing on our Lord. Satan didn't even take his life. Here it says, the Lord voluntarily, he had the power to give up his spirit. When we are praying for people, and we're speaking the gospel directly to those, 
demonic entities and forces? Why oh, tell them this? I want them to know and to remind them who we are in Christ as ambassadors of Christ. Now, see, the Lord paid our penalties. See, He washes and cleanses with His precious blood. There is no excuses for us to evict the squatters on earth. The eviction notice is out. God is raising a remnant. Warriors for battle and to expose the works of the enemy in the unseen realm. The very power that rose Christ from the dead lives in you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Lord, give us revelation that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened. It is finished. It is the Lord who gave up His Spirit. Satan didn't murder Him. No, Christ gave up His Spirit. He had the power to do that. Jesus Christ is Lord. There was no claim, no nothing on our Lord. The enemy had nothing. I want to share a testimony. And I don't, uh, I just find this quite interesting that When we were living uh, in another home, prior to, to moving to this one, we had a lot of gatherings in our home, and we stu still do in this home, and prayed for a lot of people. And I remember one day when I was just in the yard, in the front yard, doing something, I, I saw this, this white cat, an adult cat, just kind of by the bush, but it was just laying there. I didn't see any injuries, I didn't see any blood, it, it was dead. Right there, right in front, by, kind of by our doorway, okay, just around the other side of the wall, by where the flowers were, or the bushes. I never really thought about this, but this was in the beginning of our experiences with the demonic forces and spiritual warfare. And it was there, and we called the the city to, to pick up the bot to, to pick up the, the 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 cat the cat and to dispose of it and because we didn't touch it the our gardener our landscapers every week that he would come he wouldn't even touch it but no one would come to pick it up so weeks pass by months pass by And all of a sudden, I, I thought about something. That when you have a dead cat, right there in the front, right around the wall by your door, and you have people coming in and out of the house all week long, you would smell the stench of something of death. The interesting thing is, first of all, we didn't know how the cat got there. We didn't know how it died. But it was there for many, many months, for eight, nine months, still sitting there, till all was left was bones. But we never, ever smelled the stench of death. That was so unusual. Then think about it till later. 
eventually I, I went there, I picked up its bones and, and threw it away. But I believe that that was the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe because God was using our home for, for many things for the kingdom of God, even that, maybe someone put it there, maybe it was a spell, maybe they tried to put a curse, but whatever the case is, we were clueless. We did not smell the stench of death. Because our home is full of life. See, our Lord's body never underwent, underwent decay. Amazing. That's an amazing story. Let's turn to Ephesians 2. Verses 8 through 10. Praise you, Lord. Ephesians 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not as a result of works, that no one should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. For good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. The Lord's called us to walk in victory. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. We are a people of praise. Lord, it is done. Praise you, Jesus. The victory has been won. 1 John 5.4 You know, it's a privilege. When, you, when I share the Word, remember, the Word of God is a two-edged sword. It is our defensive and our offensive weapon that causes wounds that can pierce the enemy. That's why we speak the Word. Because when you speak the Word, it causes damage to them. And in 1 John 5, 4, it says this. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Praise God. Jesus Christ already won the victory. He says... Let's turn to John, I believe John 16.33. Praise the Lord. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, take courage. I have overcome the world. Jesus is the victor. He's won the battle. Let us walk in it by faith. Let's turn to John chapter 11. John chapter 11, and it says here, 25, he, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. 
He who believes in me shall live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He's talking about Lazarus when he was in the tomb and he died, but the Lord came later. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Well, how could that be? The Lord yet did not go to the cross. Was not yet crucified, buried, resurrected, ascended, seated in heavenly places. He says, still, I am the resurrection and the life even before that. In the Lord's realm, there's no time or space. Let's not limit God. He is the resurrection and the life. Our Lord has already won the victory. Let's go to John 8. John 8, 56. I would always wonder about the passages in Hebrews when all these men of faith, they... They did exploits, they did mighty works, yet they did not receive the promises. It says in Hebrews. In John 8, 56 is this. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. And was glad. You see, in the Lord, Abraham saw the day of the Lord. He said he rejoiced and he saw it. It's amazing. See, we limit God. It's another realm. The, the unseen realm is another realm. Romans 6. And in Romans 6, it says this. Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace might increase? May never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with them through baptism into death, in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified, with him, that our body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin, once for all. But life that he had, that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. You see, Romans 6 is past tense. All these things already have been done. Spiritual warfare principle number 7. Don't fight for victory, fight from victory.